Hi, I'm John Howell. I'm a professor of physics at Chapman University and the president of the International Commission for Optics. We've been developing a new multispectral camera. Today, I'd like to talk about that camera with a special guest. Hi, welcome. Can you introduce yourself? What's your name? Wally. Just kidding. I am Pinex, your personal multispectral imaging camera system. Hmm. Pimix? That sounds like something you'd pick up at the grocery store. John! Knock knock! Who's there? Champ! Champ who? No thanks! I don't have any hair! <laughs> okay, that was, that was pretty good. I like that one. We're not really here to crack jokes, we're here to talk about you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm preparing to be a robot gladiator in BattleBox. I want to defeat Mark Rober's BattleBot, Fat Tail! There's a bot in the box! No! In the open field of battle. Uh, okay. Well, I don't think that's going to go down very well. Um, I think you should stick to scientific endeavors. I meant for you to just tell us about your hyperspectral camera, but maybe first you could tell us a little bit about light. Sure. The light you see, John, is called the visible spectrum. Light is composed of waves. A wavelength is the distance between two peaks of a wave. Visible light has wavelengths measured in hundreds of nanometers and are about 100 times smaller than the width of a piece of paper. The visible spectrum has colors from violet to red or wavelengths from about 400 nanometers to about 700 nanometers. My cameras allow me to see both visible light and part of the near infrared with wavelengths up to 1000 nanometers. Now tell us a little bit about what multispectral imaging means. Let me explain it by analogy. Suppose you are taking a picture of a beautiful scene with your digital camera. The more pixels you have, the more detail you can get about the scene. By analogy, the spectrum is like a scene of colors, and the number of spectral channels are like pixels. The more spectral channels a camera has, the more information one can get about the spectrum. In my case, I organize pictures by color. In other words, I can take pictures in violet, blue, blue-green, green, yellow-green, green, and so on. A typical multispectral camera has between 2 and 10 different color channels. I can take pictures with between 20 and 25 different color channels in the visible and infrared. Could you tell us a little bit about what's on your chest? <sighs> My girlfriend can fly around at Mach 1, and I can't even move, except for my head. I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, I'm glad you got that off your chest, but I was hoping you could tell us about your LEDs. Oh, sure. I also control up to 16 light-emitting diodes. These LEDs are all at different wavelengths, ranging from the visible to the near-infrared, which is the reason you couldn't see half of the colors I just illuminated. When I illuminate my LEDs, I measure the reflectance spectra from different objects, like plants, fruit, synthetic materials, skin, soil, or tissues, for example. The light hits the object, reflects back, and is measured in my camera. I compare the reflectance spectra against a white Teflon reference target. Look at this apple. It has very little reflectivity in the blue, but is an excellent reflector in the red. Can you tell us about what are around your eyes? They are narrow bandpass filters made by our friends at Chroma Technologies, most of which have 5 to 6 OD rejection outside the bandpass window over my spectral sensitivity range. That's a fancy way of saying they are really good at letting certain colors through the filter and are really good at blocking other colors. 
You can see a few examples of the transmission spectra of some of my filters here. Here is a picture of all the wavelength regions I can measure using LEDs and bandpass filters. What is so important about multispectral imaging? With high resolution multispectral imaging and artificial intelligence, you can hold a camera in front of a stand of fruit and see which will be the tastiest. In this picture, researchers show the spectrum for unripe and ripe bananas. This allows a robot to determine when to harvest bananas. In this picture, researchers could use spectra to determine the hardness and sweetness of melons. Reflectance spectra can be used to see when to harvest crops, test which parts of fields need to be watered, and have an early warning system for plant diseases not yet visible to the human eye. It is also possible to use multispectral imaging in medicine. For example, it is possible to measure blood flow, blood oxygen saturation, or melanin content. Well, today we're here also with our friend Zero. What can you tell us about Zero? He's shy and sensitive. He doesn't feel like he is very adorable and no one but computer programmers talk to him and then only through a keyboard. Ooh, I'll make sure I talk to him after this conversation. Uh, but I was hoping you could tell us a little bit more about his specifications, hardware, stuff like that. Zero is a nickname for Pimax Zero. He runs on a Raspberry Pi 4 processor. He has 14 LEDs with a potential for controlling several dozen. He has 15 narrow band pass filters being rotated by a stepper motor. He can be used completely on battery power and with a standard 10,000 milliamp hour power bank can operate for many hours. With his onboard screen, he can run programs take pictures, and process data offline. He can also connect to a wired screen or operate remotely through VNC Viewer. So tell us why you think physicists should build you and Zero. I've noticed that physicists need friends. They tend to be socially awkward and having a friend like me can be a lot of fun. True, but what about from a scientific perspective? Skills, John, skills. While building us, they can learn 3D modeling, 3D printing, basic electronics, feedback control, Python programming, image analysis, and artificial intelligence, in addition to the physics of spectroscopy and numerous other scientific endeavors. Cost, John, cost. We are targeting $250 for a camera like Zero, which would normally cost several thousand dollars. We are looking for donors to help out. Bill, Melinda, Jeff, Mackenzie, Elon, any takers? So how can students or researchers make you? Visit our website at pinex.org. There, you can find downloads and parts lists. You can also learn our origin story and goals, what students have done, how to join our collaboration or donate to the project. The primary reason for starting this program was to help students in developing countries get access to world-changing technologies. Help us train the next generation of scientists and engineers. As I like to say about the money in your wallet, let it go, let it go. Okay, well thank you Pimex, this has been a wonderful interview.